Hi everybody, we're having friends over for lunch and I'm making pizza and chicken wings today. I'm also making some yama, a Filipino candy, and some blueberry muffins for the kids. I'm making food for four adults and three kids. The pizza that I'm gonna make today is 100% homemade. I made a dough yesterday and it's been proofing for 18 hours. I'm excited but also a little nervous because this is my first time to make pizza for other people. I have been making homemade pizza for me and Kenny and I have a recipe that we love especially for the weekend. But this time we have guests over and we want the pizza to be perfect. My challenge today is baking all five pizza in a small oven and making sure they keep hot and crispy until serving. The good thing is, I've got a simple trick to pull this off, so keep watching because this kitchen hack might just come in handy when it's your turn to invite your friends over for some pizza. and welcome to my kitchen. I am making five different pizzas today. However, my oven is small and can only accommodate two pizzas at the same time. Making two pizzas at the same time is practical. However, last time I did this, the pizza at the bottom level of the oven didn't come out as crispy and it took longer to cook. So today, I'm gonna pop each pizza in the oven one at a time because I want it to come out perfectly hot and crispy for our guests. It will take about 10 to 15 minutes to bake. Plus, I'm also making chicken wings, so I'm gonna have to manage my time carefully so that the food is ready but kept warm when our guests are ready to eat. Usually though, when you're hosting for a lunch or dinner, when your guest arrives, you don't easily go to the table and eat right away. I don't know about you guys, but the way we do it goes like this. We welcome our guests, offer them drinks, and since we're having pizza, beer is a choice of beverage. I could also make uh, cocktails, but that is a lot of work on top of baking, so I wanna keep it simple. The first order of business is to make sure that your guests feel welcome and comfortable. Normally, if you're entertaining at home and it is your guest's first time to see your place, you can give them a tour. I'm sure that your guests will appreciate that. Your partner or a loved one can do this part while you get busy in the kitchen. If you already know in advance that you're having friends over, the first thing you should do is to sit down and start planning what kind of theme you want to do. Information about how many people are coming, do they have kids, and if they're coming too. Do you want to do lunch or dinner? Do you want to make it fancy or casual? Whatever it is, it's important to have a plan. The second thing I like to do is to make notes of the food I'm planning to serve. I then start making my grocery list. I like to prep in advance. Since our friends are coming with kids, I decided to make blueberry muffins the day before. These are absolutely delicious and can last up to 3 to 4 days. If we're having Thai food for dinner with friends, I like to make Thai green chicken curry. This is great because it tastes even better the next day. For this particular day, I prepare the pizza dough one day in advance because it needs to proof for at least 12 hours. I also like to tidy up the day before. Kenny and myself take pride of our home. We like our home spotless and always looking nice and clean. When we're having friends over, I like to do a deep general cleaning. Setting the ambience is one of my favorite things to do. I like to buy some fresh flowers and I always have orchids at home. I find them very elegant for decoration. To freshen up your home, you can buy one of these lovely fragrance diffuser. I like to put a small plant in the guest room bathroom, a scented candle, fresh hand towels, and our favorite hand wash and hand cream from Rituals. Make sure that there's an extra fresh toilet paper in the bathroom. I also like to fold the toilet paper ends like this. It just looks prettier. When I'm hosting, I like to make a simple snack bar counter. Chips and dips is always a good idea. I like to pick chips with different colors for decoration. And I like to make a homemade guacamole. It's always a good combination for appetizer. 
Because her friends are coming over with kids, I've added some blueberry muffins, Halloween treats, and I made my childhood Filipino candy so the kids can try it. I like to do this because I get to connect with the kids instantly and then I can tell them the story of how I used to sell these candies back when I was in grade school. It is my simple way to connect with kids I'm meeting for the first time and making sure they feel comfortable at our place so that the adults are able to enjoy and have a great time and have a good conversation over lunch or dinner. My cycle for a pizza is 15 minutes, from stretching the dough, to putting the toppings, to baking. The problem is by the time I finish with the second pizza, the first one has been sitting for 15 minutes and is already cold and not very fresh. I don't want that. And what I also don't want is to make one pizza and then eat it and then make the next and so on because I want to cook them all so that I can also sit down, enjoy the food and the company of our guests. So here's what I came up to ensure all five pizzas are kept warm and crispy before serving. This method is very simple and guaranteed it works. First, I made sure all ingredients are ready. Dough has been proofed for the second time. The toppings are all set and the oven is preheated. We're having our friends over at 1 p.m. so I started preparing as early as 10 a.m. Kenny's in charge of preparing the apartment and I'm in charge in the kitchen. I started cooking the chicken wings around 12.30 p.m. then baked the first pizza for 10 minutes. When it was done, I placed the cooked pizza in a preheated pan over low heat and covered to keep them warm. I immediately placed the second pizza in the oven while simultaneously deep frying the chicken wings. When I finished baking the second pizza, I placed it in another preheated pan, also a low temperature, and I immediately proceeded to bake the third pizza and so on. One more thing that I feel is worth mentioning is to make sure that your baking tray is real nice and hot so that your pizza won't stick to the bottom of your baking tray and it'd be a lot easier to lift the pizza when it's done. It can be tricky, especially if you don't have a pizza shovel, but you can improvise by using one of these. I bought this for 31 Hong Kong dollars and it's a very good alternative. Also, I like to use a semolina flour instead of all-purpose flour for dusting my pizza peel. It allows the pizza to release easily when you slide it to the baking tray. One last thing to remember is to work as quickly as possible when your pizza dough hit the pizza peel. You've only got a few minutes until the pizza dough absorb the flour and stick to the bottom of the peel. That is why it's very important to have all your pizza toppings ready to go. Yeah, mine is one of my favorite childhood candies. I learned this recipe from my mother. Thanks, Ma! Thank you. My favorite part is wrapping the candies with colorful cellophane. Yama can last for up to 5 to 7 weeks, so I like to make a bunch for the holidays because they're perfect Christmas candy gifts. I will make a separate vlog on how to make Yama, so stay tuned! If you have leftover pizza, store it in an airtight container or cover it with a plastic wrap and pop it in the fridge. The pizza will still taste amazing the next day. To heat them up, I know people who like to do it in the oven or in the microwave, but we like to do it in a pan. All you gotta do to have a really nice and crispy pizza is to add a little bit of olive oil in a pan and then grill the pizza for several minutes. I guarantee it will turn out super crispy and super yummy. At this point, I stopped filming because our guests have arrived. We had an amazing time. We loved the pizza and the chicken wings, and it felt accomplished. What about you guys? How do you like to entertain your guests? And what do you do to keep your pizza fresh and warm before serving? Also, let me know if you want me to feature my homemade pizza recipe. Leave me a comment below. As always, I would love to hear from you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. For more insightful videos and updates, please consider to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to keep yourself updated with my upcoming videos. If you are on Facebook, please like and follow me at Survivor Echo. 
Also, I just recently reactivated my Instagram account. If you're on it, you can follow me at Spicy Nicolano and at Echo's Kitchen 101. That is it, you guys. Thanks for watching. Keep safe, stay healthy, and always keep a positive mind. I'll see you on Wednesday, same time, same place. Have a great day. Bye.